you lock your doors at night and you may even have some security cameras. And if you're South African like me, you absolutely have your alarm on. All that security becomes absolutely pointless if you leave your windows wide open. And the same thing applies to your digital security. You think you're doing all the right things. You've got a strong password. You have two-factor authentication. You may even have a VPN. But have you checked to make sure that you haven't left your digital windows open? Let me show you how you can very easily check. We've all been to one of those large office buildings. You know the type where each floor has a different department, like marketing is on one and accounting is on another and customer service is on another. You can't just walk into those buildings. You've got to go first to reception and then you've got to check in and then you've got to tell them which office you need to get to. After passing that, they give you a key card that allows you to get only to that correct floor. Well, the same thing applies with internet traffic coming into your router. It first hits your router and checks in. It has to pass security and if it does, only then is it allowed to enter your network but it is only allowed to go to the service that it needs. Those are called ports. So now that we understand what ports are, the big security thing that we have to check on our own routers is, does it have any ports that are open allowing traffic to come in? Well, you can go to your router settings and play with those various menus and various options, which is a good idea, but it can be technical. What I like to do is go to this website. Right, let's head over to this website, dnschecker.org slash port-scanner.php. And yes, of course, I'm going to have links to this in the description. Here you'll find all the common ports that are available out there. Uh, you can go through them, but realistically, it will take care of it. On the left-hand side, it automatically puts in your current IP address that's public. And now you've got a couple of options. You can choose custom ports, server ports, game ports, application ports, P2P ports, I'm going to show you all of this super simple. We're going to start with scan all common ports on the right hand side. You simply click on it, scroll down, and what you want to see is this, a whole bunch of timeouts. In this case, timeout is a good thing. It means it tried to connect to those ports, but it couldn't. Yay, that's exactly what we want. Right, let's go right to the top again. And this time I'm gonna choose server ports and it automatically puts in the port numbers, click on check and then start scrolling down and wait for it to do its thing. Now the next one, application ports. Now this one's important because you're going to see things like Apple remote desktop. You're gonna see printer sharing. You're gonna see Windows remote desktop. If you scroll further down, you're going to see PC Anywhere. You're going to see that twice because of two different ports. You're going to see VNC. Now, these are the type of applications that scammers use to take over your desktop as if they're trying to help you. So go through all of these. It takes a couple of seconds to run each one and just make sure each one of them is timed out. If any of them allow them through, go to your router settings and block those ports. In fact, Unless you're actually hosting your own web server or your own email server on your own home computer, the router should not allow those ports to be open at all. Now, you may be thinking, hold on a second, uh, this makes no sense. If you're gonna block those ports, well then how do you browse the web? I mean, you're going to google.com, it needs to come back into the network, right? So if the port is blocked, then it's gonna break your internet. Ah, there is a difference between initiated traffic and unsolicited traffic. Okay, so like back to the office analogy. Let's say Mr. Smith is in department 301 and he wants to get information from a company called Google. So he sends out a letter. That letter first goes to the reception and they get it sent out. When Google replies to the letter, the delivery person comes in to the reception and says, hey, I've got a letter for Mr. Smith. The people at reception look it up and say, yes, I see Mr. Smith is waiting for a reply, so the letter is allowed in. Same thing happens with your router. It knows that you sent out a request to Google, so when Google replies, it is allowed back into your browser. What it doesn't allow is connections requests to your browser from a random stranger that is out there that you didn't initiate. Now, obviously I can't go through each router and show you how to do it, but just Google your router or even simpler, go to ChatGPT, 
type it in, and it gives you a step-by-step -step instructions. Okay, now that you know that your ports are closed, let's look at another security website. Now, let's say you're sitting in your office building, you're receiving an email. Inside that email, there is a link to click on. Technically, it should be safe to click on. After all, it did pass the security checks on your email server and it passed the security check at your router. But that still doesn't mean it is safe as hackers and scammers are constantly finding ways to bypass these security checks. So here is what you should do. Right, two websites I like, virustotal.com and I like urlvoid.com. So what do you do, click on URL, paste in the URL that you're not sure if it's legit or not and let it run through its test. And here you'll see on virus total, it picked it up as malicious, lots of raids. But you'll also notice uh, lots of grids, which means it passed some of those tests for some reason. So what I like to do, go to the second website, urlvoid.com, paste in the same website and then get a second opinion. So when that's finished, it's running its scan, you scroll down, you'll see, okay, a little bit of red here. And once again, you see a lot of red, but you also see a lot of green. So between those two, I kind of get the feeling this is a dodgy website. Now here's why I like URL void as well. So you go to the top and you click on screenshot. Now you put in the same URL, you got to confirm you're not a robot and click on take screenshot. Now, if this pops up pretty quickly, you know there's an issue. URL is not valid, not accurate, or not allowed. So that's already huge red flags. Let me show you the difference between something that is a red flag and something that isn't. Here is my personal website, thetechieguy.com. Take a screenshot, let this thing load, and there is a screenshot of my website. So three indicators telling us whether a link is malicious, not malicious, should you click on it, should you not click on it. And whilst we're still on the topic of browsing, how are data brokers and big tech able to constantly track you and monitor your clicks as you browse the web? Well, in the office, Mr. Smith is known for always wearing a designer suit. He wears a size nine and a half shoes. He signs his name with a black Bic pen. He wears thick sunglasses and a hat. Individually, Nothing unique about these items. Lots of people wear a hat, lots of people have glasses. But when you put them together, people notice that when Mr. Smith walks into a meeting or he's in the break room getting coffee, they know that it's Mr. Smith. That is his style. Same thing happens with your browser. You have various elements on your computer that when they are combined, they give your browser a unique identity. So whatever you do online is like leaving digital browser fingerprints all over the place. This is called browser fingerprinting. And here is how you can check how unique your browser is. Right, let's head over to miunique.org slash fingerprint. And then that basically is a website that tells you how unique your browser fingerprint actually is. And you look through this and it says, yes, you are unique amongst, what, four, over four million fingerprints. That's not a good thing. You do not want to be unique because if you are unique, it means that they could track you. Just look at how many things this thing checks for and puts it all together as signals to identify this particular browser. Even in Firefox, it actually managed to identify that this is a unique browser. But Firefox is supposed to be all about protection. So let's go into the settings. Let's look up fingerprinting. And there we go. By standard, it's supposed to be blocking those. So let's go and set this to strict. Maybe it needs stricter controls. And now that it's set to strict, let's go and reload that page and see if it managed to identify it. Reload it. Well, it still identified it. You can see that these fingerprint systems are pretty robust and they have ways to bypass things like privacy, Badger, Chrome extension, and even Firefox. It's no wonder that so much of our data lands up in the hands of these data brokers, which is why I keep going on and on about Delete Me, who are longtime supporters of this channel. We just wanna keep your private data private and out of the hands of data brokers. But delete me, your personal data is yours again. What they do is that you submit your information to delete me, then their system goes out and finds all your private information on all these various websites, and then they get it removed automatically for you. 
they look for things like your name, your age, your address, social media, even relatives, and a whole bunch more. And then you get a report, basically the saying, what is the status of your information getting removed from each of these hundreds and hundreds of data broker websites? I also like the fact that you can log into a dashboard. It shows you how many listings we're seeing, how many were removed, over what period of time, what's going on with your data. Head over to joindeleteme.com slash Liron20 and get 20% off your data plan because those fingerprinting sites are just going to keep tracking you and selling your information again and again and again unless you do something about it. Right, back to our Mr. Smith. He wants to quit. He's had enough. He wants to send his resume to someone in another office. And obviously he doesn't want anyone to know. So he puts this inside an envelope and he puts that envelope inside another envelope and gives it to the mailroom. The problem is he doesn't know what the actual mailing address is of the other office. So he calls up the company to ask them for their mailing address, totally forgetting that all calls are monitored and logged. Bastard. That is exactly what can happen when you use a VPN. The confidential traffic is locked up inside an envelope and nobody can see what you're sending and receiving, which websites you're browsing. But there is a possibility that there is something called a DNS leak. This is where instead of looking up the website that happens inside a secure VPN, actually happens outside of it. And when that happens, your internet service provider can see exactly which websites you're looking up. So is your VPN leaking? Here's how to check. Okay, let's fire up my VPN. I'm gonna to connect to the UK. And when I do that, I'm gonna go into a website called browserscan.net slash DNS dash leak. And then I'm gonna let it run and do its thing. What I'm looking for is to see if any servers along the way are actually ISP servers. So here you can see Cloudflare and Cloudflare, but none of them are actually internet service providers. My data is safe. Now I'm gonna head over to Spain and let's see what it does with the data. Now look at that. Your DNS lookup are at risk now because what's going on, it looks like, well, it's going via France for some reason, then to Spain, then it's got another France server. Why is it bouncing it all around here for DNS lookups? Something's weird. There is a DNS leak along the way. So whenever I use my VPN, I always check the site because it changes all the time. And I wanna make sure that my current VPN traffic is indeed secure and not leaking my data everywhere. I have links to all of this in the description and they are well worth bookmarking. As you saw, it takes a couple of seconds to run these tests. Isn't your data and security privacy worth those couple of seconds? I love these websites. And if you have any other recommendations, please let us know in the comments as well. And if you still don't have a VPN for some bizarre reason, try these ones out, which are free and don't actually suck. Give the video a quick thumbs up before you head out and I'll see you in this video. Let's go.